Recently, I did a video about Starship, an amazing tool for configuring your terminal prompt. I'm still using Starship every day, and so in this video, we're gonna look at how we can create custom modules to show the information you care about in your prompt. I've got my Starship prompt open here, and let's scroll down to the bottom, and we're gonna create our custom modules here. So custom modules need to be named beginning with the word custom. So I'm gonna call our first one custom.readme because this is going to show some information in our prompt whenever there is a readme file in the current directory. This is going to be an example of the first way that you can choose whether a particular module should be displayed or not. And that is using the detect files key. So detect files takes an array here and we can pass in a name of a file. You can immediately see how this would be useful for some of the built in modules. For example, .nvmrc might be the file that you're looking for if you want to show some NVM particular information. Instead, we're going to go with readme.md. We could also pass in just straight readme as another example here. If either of these files are matched, then we'll be able to show some information that we have yet to configure here in our terminal prompt. Now you can do more than just detect files if you want to. We can do detect folders if you had a source folder or something that you wanted to detect. And you can also do detect extensions if we wanted to trigger this based on JavaScript files in this example. I only care about files, so I'm gonna delete these other two. And now let's look at actually displaying some information. Well, similar to all of the other things that we've configured here for Starship, we can use a style and a format tag. I'm gonna copy these ones that I have from time and we're going to change this a little bit. Instead of saying bold white, uh, why don't we just change this to be red? And so that will be the style that is applied to time in this case, but we don't actually have a time variable. What we could do instead is say symbol and let's set a symbol here. Maybe our symbol is just going to be R for readme. Let's start with this. To actually use this, we're going to have to add it to our format line here. I'm going to add it at the beginning of line 11 here, custom.readme. Obviously, I'm using the curly braces here because the period in here needs to be escaped or recognized. If we didn't, it would just be looking for something custom because the period here needs to be recognized. So if we save that and I go back to the terminal, the thing I love about Starship is there's nothing you need to reload or restart your terminal. As you can see, immediately we have this R showing up here right beside 35 seconds. So R is now showing up. If I maybe go to my home directory, you can see there is no R because there's no readme in my home directory. If we go back to the dot files, then R appears once again. Now R is not a lot of information. Maybe there's something else we could show instead. And there is, we could set a command here and command will take a command line command, as you might guess, and the output of that we can show in our output. For example, maybe I want to say word count dash L and we'll look for this in the readme file. I'm going to do readme star because I think that should work for any file extension. We'll see if that works. I'm, I'm actually not sure. And so now our format here will not be just the symbol. Let's include symbol. And then after that, we can do output. Now output is the variable that Starship will assign the result of our command to. And so we can use that like that. Let's give this a try. Interesting. As we can see, we've got 18 readme. I think what's going on here, if I do word count dash L readme star, yeah, it's essentially recognizing that this could be multiple files. And so it's going to put one on each line, I guess the only way. Oh, it does that anyway. Okay, cool. So then what we're going to do here in our word count is we're going to pipe this and we could just do awk print the first field. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that is a tiny bit slow. If I hit enter, you can see that that's a little bit slow. Something to keep in mind with this is that when you're adding things to your prompt, obviously these are programs that have to run every time you get a new shell. And so if you add a lot to it, you're going to run into problems where it starts to slow down your actual shell. So this is a trade off you need to make. How important is it to you to see that information versus have a quick prompt? One thing that you could do is put this into a shell script where maybe it caches that value in a environment variable and then updates it like every third or fourth time, something like that. That could be an interesting thing to play around with here. Um, but for now, let's look at some other things that we can do with our custom prompt here. Let's create another custom prompt that we're going to call custom.home. This time, instead of detecting a particular file or folder or extension, we want to run a shell command. And if that shell command exits cleanly or returns true, then what we want to do is show some output. We use the key when for this, and we're going to pass this a little shell script. So we're going to say test dollar sign home home equals dollar sign PWD. So these of course are two built in variables. Home should be my home directory pwd should be the current directory that i'm in and then test is usually an alias for if and this will just return cleanly or an exit code zero if the particular statement that we passed here is true when that's true we need a format to display let's do something super basic here you are home 
we're just going to display the text will show that you don't actually need to use these more complex styling tags or reference other variables. You can really just inline things like this as well. All right, let's add this to our prompt here. Custom home, save that. All right, so obviously right now I'm not in my home directory. If I do CD, I move directly to my home directory and you can see now I have the text you are home showing up. If you're not familiar with those variables, you can do echo dollar sign home, echo dollar sign PWD to show that they are the same path. If we move back to my dot files and echo PWD, you can see that this is a different path. And so of course this text does not appear. So these are both kind of contrived examples that show you some of the capabilities, but maybe are not particularly useful. Why don't we create one here that actually might be useful to you? This is something that I had a need for recently. So the situation is I created a secure tunnel or a stunnel, maybe you've heard of that tool, to a remote uh, Redis instance, I think it was in my case. And when you do that, localhost at Redis port becomes a tunnel to that remote thing. And so if you forget to close that tunnel, and then you're trying to use Redis locally, you might accidentally be hitting a remote Redis instance and not realizing it. So what I want is something that can show in my prompt if I have a tunnel open. So we're going to call this custom dot s tunnel or stunnel and we're going to do a couple of things here we need to show something when this tunnel is open so we're going to do ps aux to show a list of all of my running processes and then we're going to grep for stunnel which is the program i was using and then we're going to remove the reference to grep itself so if we do this right now ps aux grep stunnel grep dash v grep we'll find we have no results because I don't have the tunnel running. Instead of actually letting the tunnel run, why don't we use Vim instead? So we can see that I do have Vim open right now, editing my Starship config. So we're just gonna use Vim as the replacement process in this particular case. So let's go ahead and replace this with Vim. Obviously, you can replace this with whatever process you actually do care about. Now, what is our command? Now, the command here is gonna be a little more complex because what I wanna show is the length of time that this particular process has been running. So we're gonna do ps-o-e time equals dash p. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't 100% know what all these flags do, but this is a little bit of, I guess, what you could call stack overflow driven development. But I do know that the last thing we need to put in here is the process ID for the Vim process in this case. I'm going to grab my when command here, copy that and paste it in there. That will get me this particular process. And then I know that if we go back to our terminal here and you can see this is the output, right, that we're going to get, the second field here is the process ID. So what I can do is pass this to awk and we can do print dollar sign two. And there is our command. It gives us the length of time that this particular process has been running. So now we just need a format and I'm just gonna say, actually let's set a style to red here because I think that's, that's important in this case. And then let's uh, create a style tag here, tunnel open for output. Let's head up here to the top. I'm gonna replace readme here with stunnel. I'm gonna remove home because I don't really care about that one so much. Save and close that. And now, interesting, so we're getting tunnel open for, but then there's no actual value here. Now you can notice this is pretty slow, which is ultimately why I ended up not using this. I'm using this as an example in the video because I think this is a great use case and one day I wanna find some time to actually optimize this. I think the approach that I talked about earlier where you're kind of caching a value and maybe not checking for this process every single time we run the terminal would be a great way to do this. But let's figure out why our time isn't showing up. The next step will be to run this command on its own. So let's copy that and I'm gonna paste it into the terminal here. Okay, looks like I do have a problem. Oh, I don't think, I think e time here, whatever that means, is not actually a flag. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So I just need to remove that. There we go. E time, not a flag. There we go, look at that. Tunnel open for 22 minutes, 44 seconds. There we go. That's an example of a Starship custom module that you can use to give you information that you care about in your terminal. Of course, Starship has a ton of great modules built in, so you may not have a need for this, but if there is something you need, even temporarily, it's pretty easy to set that up. Now, if you use Starship and have created custom modules, definitely let us know about this in the comments. I've been trying to find ways to optimize these so that they don't take so long to run. And like I said, I haven't had a chance to play around with a caching script or anything like that yet, but if you have or you know of better ways to do it, definitely let me know in the comments. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.